Welcome to Bothany. Now I have to confess something. I've always wanted an electric car, especially since the Tesla's come out. Unfortunately, I can't afford a Tesla. But I do really, really like the idea of electric propulsion. I like the idea of not using as much petroleum to get from point A to point B. I know that if I'm going to plug in my electric car, it's still going to come from coal. Maybe I'll get lucky. Some of it's going to come from solar or wind. Some of it's going to come from nuclear. But realistically, I'd like to ditch the car altogether, um, or at least ditch petroleum. Since I can't afford an electric car, I'm going to build an electric bicycle. More specifically, a mid-drive electric bicycle. For that, I'm going to use this Gate Fun or Bafang uh, kit. It's a mid-drive conversion kit, which means that this part here goes through the crank. Um, it has crank arms that come with it. You have to supply your own pedals, of course. Here is where the gear or spider hooks on. It comes with some other stuff here. I'm going to show you. It's got a 46 tooth uh, gear that hooks on here, as well as a bash guard. We're not going to use these. I'll explain why later. It's got the crank arms, of course. It has a display and uh, controls. It's got minus, plus, and a power button there. Uh, and the display gives you your speed and what mode it's in and all of that kind of stuff. Comes with the wiring harness. Also comes with uh, two brake levers. The brake levers have switches on them that cut off the throttle when you engage the brake. Uh, so these brake levers will replace the brake levers that are on the bicycle that's behind me right there. And it also comes with a thumb throttle. Uh, the thumb throttle, you know, tweak it with your thumb and uh, it accelerates the bike. There's also pedal assist. has a pedal assist sensor right here. Uh, that pedal assist sensor goes on the spoke. Well, the magnet goes on the spoke of the bicycle and the sensor goes on one of the arms uh, that the spoke runs by. Depending on where you locate it, it's going to be one of the chain stays. And that's about it that comes with the actual kit itself. Now, if I was just to put that kit on this bicycle, what I would end up with is a converted electric bicycle, and that's not really what I want to go for here. Uh, what I've got behind me here is a hybrid bike. It's a Diamondback Hedgewood. It's 21 speed. It's large. I'm six foot tall, so I had to get the extra large one. Um, now, if I was just to take this Bafang kit, and add it to this bike behind me. Uh, it would be pretty cool, but it's not really what I'm going for. I'm going to describe why here. This bike, uh, the Diamondback Edgewood, is a hybrid bike, and it's fairly standard uh, mountain bike, hybrid bike type of deal. Uh, it's got 700C wheels, it's a 21 speed, it's got three chain rings in the front, and seven gears in the back on the freewheel. Um, if I was to convert this, because this Bafang kit replaces the front, and you remove the front derailleur and all of the front gears and replace it with just a single gear, um, then I, what I would end up with is a seven-speed hybrid electric bike, which is kind of cool. The, unfor the unfortunate thing about that is that when you shift one of these mid-drive bikes, if you shift it with the throttle up, it does a clump that's really kind of jarring and uh, it can't damage things, theoretically. So what I want to do is actually have a bike that feels like it was designed to be electric from the start. So I'm going to get rid of not only the front uh, three chain rings with this kit, but I'm going to get rid of the rear freewheel as well, and we're going to replace it with the Navinci N360. Now this is a continuously variable transmission, uh, basically, for that fits inside a bicycle hub. Um, and takes one single chain sprocket on it. So uh, I'm not going to do any chain shifting at all. All of the shifting is going to be internal to the rear hub. And that's actually behind me. I've already laced it up. And I've got it right here. Now, keep in mind, this is laced. It is not yet trued uh, or tensioned. And I will go through that process, and I'll probably end up doing it on the bike. I don't lace up a lot of wheels, so I don't have a truing stand. Uh, but I can go ahead and get this tensioned up, trued on the bike, and get it installed, I think, without, without any issues. So we're going to go ahead and do it that way, but I do already have it laced up, 
It's laced to cross uh, for anybody who's planning on lacing this up or trying to follow along with this project at home. Um, this is a 700C wheel. They do recommend going two cross on this size of wheel. If it gets too much smaller, below 26 inches, they say go one cross. They don't want it done radially and they don't want it done three cross like a normal mountain bike wheel would be. If you don't lace wheels, that was all gibberish and you can ignore it. And you can just get the DaVinci, take it to your local bike shop and have them put a rim and some spokes on it. Um, not sure how much that costs. It's going to depend on where you are. But this here is the DaVinci. Now on this side, this is the little plug that keeps it from shifting. But it's got these little splines here and uh, it's got a shifter that hooks onto those splines. and. It's basically an analog shifting mechanism. It's never out of gear. All it does is change the ratio, and it does so without gears, really. It's got little balls and spindles, and, and it tilts, and basically the angles change, and it's really, really cool. Um, but because of that, it's never out of gear, and so you don't get any clunking. All that happens is you change the ratio by twisting the shifter, and you could do that at a stop or moving. It's very unlike a chain where after you shift gears, you have to pedal a bit to get it to shift. Uh, this is instantaneous, so, so this is a very good fit for an electric bicycle, and, uh, and that's why that's what we're using here. So, so this is the second part of the conversion that is going to get it all the way there. Uh, in addition to that, we're switching from the linear brakes that are on the back of that bike now to a roller brake. Uh, there's two reasons for that. One, I got this DaVinci Hub on sale. The roller brake was the only version that was available of it. And I got it for really, really, really cheap. And that allowed me to purchase the roller brake and still come in way under what I would have come in had I gotten the disc brake version or the other version of this that has just a dust cap over the uh, roller brake part. But that roller brake, even though it's somewhat inferior to linear brakes in terms of stopping power, has one really good advantage to it, and that's it still works when it gets wet. And I still have the linear brake for the front. Between the mix of the linear brake for the front and the roller brake for the back, I'm planning on having enough stopping power for this project. Now, as far as stopping power, that gets us. As far as going power, we'll talk about that for just a second. This at 8 fun or Bafang kit, right here, is 750 watts. They make 750 watt kits, they make 500 watt kits, they make 350 watt kits. 750 is the max street legal power that you can have and it has to max out at 20 miles per hour. And it actually does have a software governor in it that will limit it to 20 miles an hour, uh, which is kind of nice if you want to maintain your street legal nature of your bike if you're not doing any off-road stuff or anything like that. In addition, because it uses the rear freewheel, or in this case, the rear transmission of the bike, uh, you can gear it differently and get more torque than you should be able to out of a, a hub, an electric hub motor, uh, especially a direct drive hub. The geared hubs do a little bit better job of, of coming down. That's the basics of the project. Now, one other thing that I'll describe here, since we're going to the New Vinci, um, we cannot use this 46 tooth gear and bash guard that come with the bath and kit. They recommend 1.8 to 2 to 1 as far as the front chain ring to back cog ratio on this Da Vinci. And uh, at 46 teeth, that would mean I put a 23 tooth on the Da Vinci hub. Unfortunately, they also recommend only going as high as 22 teeth on the Da Vinci hub. So, the best way for me to get that ratio is for me to buy this add-on on eBay. Now, what this does is it replaces this gear here with a piece that can now take any 104 BCD spider. In addition to that, we've got a nice 36 tooth spider and an 18 tooth Shimano cog to go onto the hub. That gives me a 2 to 1 ratio, which is exactly what I want for this project. Okay, as you can see here, we've got all the accoutrements off of the handlebars. Uh, all the shifters are hanging there. Most of them are they're going away. The only cable that's even getting reused is going to be the front brake cable. All the other cables are in the dumpster. Um, you know, if, one of the few things that's actually not in the dumpster is going to be these handle grips here. Uh, the handle grips I got off in one piece, you do that by uh, sneaking a uh, 
screwdriver in from the from the grip side, from the handlebar side of things, uh, just underneath there, and then using some soapy water. I actually used saddle soap, and that works fine, and it doesn't mess up the uh, the actual grips. And the same soapy water is what you'll use to put them back on at the end. If they end up slipping around, or if they were slipping before you put them on, you can always use a, a little piece or some uh, hairspray. And uh, next step is going to be to pull off the front derailleur and uh, all that crank mechanism there. Welcome back. We've got this set up here. I wanted to go ahead and show you. Uh, this is our ghetto truing stand. We've taken the rear rack of the bicycle, taken a metal ruler and a rubber band, uh, the rubber band around across it, and then uh, put it back through there. And uh, that gives you a, a basic truing stand. This is a Sheldon Brown style hack. If you've been to Sheldon Brown site, you know what I'm talking about. It's a really cool site. It's a lot of information about bicycles. Uh, but we've used this to go ahead and get the spokes up to tension and get the wheel for the most part trued. I've got some minor truing left to do on it, but if you don't have a, a truing rack, you can go ahead and do this. If this only bike wheel you're gonna be building and you're following along at home. We've gone ahead and taken these 261 millimeter spokes. Uh, they're two millimeters wide, so they're number 14 spokes. And we have tensioned them up. I, I tend to tune them by sound. That, that there is right around an A. It's a little bit, it's about a note higher than what you would normally look for. Normally you'd be right around a G note uh, that you'd be trying to hear out of the spokes. But, uh, but that A is uh, because of the shorter spokes, we've got 260, right around 261 uh, millimeters and the, the hub's a little bit bigger. So the shorter spoke makes a little bit higher of a noise for the same amount of dynamic tension. But these are all tensioned up. We're gonna go ahead and pull this rear wheel off and uh, install the roller brake and start to install the shifter and uh, that'll be the next installment. All right, at this point, our e-bike is 99% done. The only thing we're waiting on is the battery. The battery we're gonna use for this is a 48 volt lithium iron phosphate battery. We're gonna choose that battery for several reasons. Uh, first reason is that it's light. It's about a third to half the weight of the lead acid battery. The second reason is that it has a long lifetime. It can take about a thousand charges, still retain 85% of its strength, 2000 charges, 70%. So it has a practical lifetime of five to 10 years in this application, which is exactly what we want. Okay. Continuing the tour of the finished e-bike conversion, the handlebars, you can see as we close in over here, on the right side, we've got, as I focus in there, the Vinci shifter. Now this is our gradual shifter. The further back you pull it, the more that little readout flattens the hill that, that's on there. You can see there's a little bicycle and a hill there. It's kind of cool. It's all, always in gear and it just gradually shifts uh, ratios. And we've got our headlights there. We've got our Bafang uh, display. Then over here we have our controls, we've got our thumb throttle, and then our power, plus and minus controls, as well as the bell. Uh, in addition, we've got our rear brake and front brake set up over here. So, that's the handlebars of the finished conversion, and you can see the wiring harness from that comes back down, around, and down to the motor kit there. Okay. Continuing our tour of the finished e-bike conversion, you can see the 8-fun motor installed there on the crank. Uh, we've got the 36-tooth gear installed there uh, using this spider that we got off eBay. That's the actual add-on part. We did not use the 46-tooth gear that came with the kit. Uh, we're using this instead. We don't have a bash guard on there. Uh, we've also gone ahead and installed a pretty single-speed chain on there that looks very nice. Uh, continuing back here. You can see that we go to the New Vinci 360 hub there. Uh, we're actually using, instead of earlier, I said uh, there would be an 18 uh, tooth spark or cog on the back there. That's actually a 20 tooth cog, an 18 tooth ended up a really, really high gearing for the bike. Uh, it has a much better gearing with a 20 tooth cog on the back. And you can see we've got our chain tensioner there to, uh, to keep the wheel tight uh, because we've got a vertical dropout. So that's the basics of the back end of the conversion. You can see the New Vinci M360 actually has two shift cables that go to it they go all the way up through and to the handlebars and then on the other side uh, the roller brake has one but we have ditched the front derailleur so all our cables are now going to the back um, all of the motor cables here we've got going up through the last thing I'll mention here is you can see it right through there is our speed sensor uh, you can see the 
conversion kit from this side shows the actual branding, the 8Fun logo. Um, the wires here go back to the Hall Effect speed sensor. That speed sensor allow, uses that magnet down there that you can see in the center of the frame to detect the speed of the rear wheel. Uh, that's for the pedal assist and for the speedometer readout that's on the controller up on the handlebars. Um, in addition, we've got the roller brake addition here all hooked in. Everything's done with that, and everything seems to work quite nicely. So this kit is pretty much complete. Uh, the battery wires go right up to there. We've got this nice Ibera triangle bag, which is just large enough to hold the 10 amp hour battery that we're going to receive. Any larger battery probably wouldn't fit in this bag, and we'd be putting it on the rear rack right there. Uh, but that's about the guts of the conversion there.